Hi, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to do a card with our new Dragonfly set stamps and the Dragonfly text that can go with those stamps with a lovely rich inky background uh, and use a couple of other little funky products in there as well. So thank you, let's see what we're going to be using today. So we've got our Dragonfly set. So the solid Dragonfly has been in the range for a while but I've now teamed it up with an anatomical Dragonfly drawing which is fabulous and then also done some dragonfly text to go with it. So we've got a definition plus some more sketchy words, which will be great for creating backgrounds. Our inks in the Catherine Pooler range out of the Spa collection. We've got Tranquil and Cove Blue, and then bringing some purple tones in with the Royal Treatment, plus some Versamarker embossing and some Versafine Claire Nocturne sitting upside down. Now, alongside that, also going to use some metallic sprays done with the Color Blast mica powders, mainly singing the blues, which is a fabulous blue color, but also probably bring some bling into there as well, the lovely gold. So we'll be spraying those on. There's also another product I want to use, which is the Distress St Spray Stain. However, the Distress, it used to come as a Distress Stain in a Dauber bottle but now only comes in a spray bottle. Now the spray bottle is fabulous if you want to spray white flecks on a card to get a galaxy look, things like that, as well as mixing it in with other spray stains to create background effects. But because I want to put it on a stamp, it's actually better to have it in the Dauber bottle. So we do sell the empty Dauber bottles. So if you're wanting to, with the spray stain, you can put some into a bottle, use some as a spray, some as a Dauber. Or you can put a bit on your mat and apply it to the stamp with the dauber, but I find you waste a fair bit that way. I prefer to have it in this type of bottle. So we're using that. We'll be using some clear embossing powder, some of our big blending brushes, and having a ball and creating something a little bit like this. Okay, so our first stage is to start creating a smooshy background. And to do this, I'm just going to use the lighter of the inks because I'd like the card to be fairly soft in the middle and then go to being deeper on the outer edges. So I'm going to use just Tranquil on its own and give that a bit of a spritz with some water. Grab our Cotton Blend cardstock and give it a spritz as well. And then smoosh it into that ink and just create some lovely smoosh. Then pop that to one side. I might give it just another little bit of a spritz and then we're going to paper towel off a fair bit of that. So that we end up with just a nice bit of smooshiness, bit of color, although I think I want a little bit more. So I'm just going to put it back into whatever's left on the glass mat. That's better. Okay, now give our mat a wipe. Now, I've got a couple of different samples to show you. On some of them, I actually did the back, the rest of the, the next stage of colouring and then spritzed the card with our metallics. But this one, I'm going to just, while it's still wet, lay it down there and keep adding some metallics. So we've got our Singing the Blues mica powder, which I've popped into a spray bottle. Usually, I do about five scoops, so about that much on the end of a spatula, five of those to about this much water in the bottle. And that lasts me for quite a while. You do need to roll it or shake it so that you get nothing left on the bottom of it. And then we're ready to spray. Just move a few things out of the way a bit before it starts spritzing everywhere. And I want a fair bit of this color on there. But as well as the blue, I'm just gonna add a little bit of the bling color as well, which is the gold. I'm looking for a really opalescent look on the card. So by using blues, but adding a little bit of gold in there as well, that should give us that opalescent. Now let's move it just onto our glass mat and give it a heat. So I'll just wipe any excess spray off there and just dry this off. So that we can start layering on, brushing on some background colors. So I have got another sample that I'll show you while I'm doing this. So on this one, I actually did my brushing on of my background, my other colors that we're about to do, and then spritzed it with the metallics. And so what you get is because the metallics are mixed with water, you get some of the color lifting off from where you've 
brushed it on. So it's just two different looks with similar techniques, but just the look that you get is going to change depending on at what stage you've spritzed it. So let's just go over that with our bit of paper towel, make sure that we've got beautiful shine there, but we really want that card to be fairly dry. So I'm just going to give it another little heat. I'll flip it over and give it a bit of a heat from on the back as well. So we're working on the cotton blend cardstock, which can cope with a fair bit of water being used on it. We could use the 300 and uh, the 300 GSM as well. Um, I find I sometimes prefer the 210 for my blending and my stamping point of view, but really either one would work fine. So I'm just going to run that through my hand a little bit just to smooth it out. I don't know whether Matthew can catch the look of that gorgeous metallic shine that we've got happening there. Can you see that looking all beautiful and shiny, Matty? Yeah, I think so. Yep. <laughs> okay, so pop that down and we'll start doing our blending. So. Blending I'm going to do with Cove Blue and Royal Treatment. I'll start off with the Cove Blue and a blending brush and we'll just work from the outer edge. So I want the centre of the card to stay fairly light. But I'm going to layer the Royal Treatment around the outer edge so I can bring that Cove Blue in half, about halfway. So starting on the edge and then bring it in towards the middle so that as you're getting to here, it's blending off to almost nothing. So start on the edge, give it a good massage into the card. We can pick up any excess color off our glass mat there. I often start, when I'm on the edge, start with a bit lighter pressure and then as I get the brush moving and I'm working onto the card, I can increase the pressure a little bit. This Cove Blue is such a good colour, it just seems to blend with whatever colours I put it with. But I really did like, for the opalescent look, I really did like it with the hint of purple in there, that just works. I think very well. It's quite a denim-y sort of blue. At the moment the Cove Blue is only available in a large size pad, but it will be coming out, the whole beach resort set will be coming out as mini ink pads uh, either later this year or early next year, not quite sure when but we will see those as a set of minis if you're collecting the ink pads in the mini sizes. Nearly there down this side. I'll just pick up a bit off the mat there. <laughs> Blending it in. Now we may get a few areas where the ink grabs a bit because the card might still be a little bit damp and that's just because I haven't got time to stop and really dry it because we've got to get this video done in a certain time. But by the time I've added in the purple and then we've done our stamping and some over stamping, I really don't think an odd little bit of ink grabbing is going to actually show. So this is the Royal Treatment. So many other colours you could blend here. I just felt like purple was the way to go today. Now I'm going to use both this solid and the anatomical outline of the dragonfly. And we're going to do a couple of different tricks with them. So I'm just picking up some of that excess purple there. Just massaging that into the card a bit more. Right. Now with those same colours, we're going to ink our dragonfly. Let me just give this a little clean. Move the ink pad out of the way so I don't actually, I don't really want to spray water into my ink pads. Give that a bit of a clean. 
So using our solid dragonfly, I want to add just a little bit more color where his wings are going to go. So I'll ink him up with the tranquil and I don't worry about, I'm not worrying about the body too much. I'm just really worrying about the wings. But if I get a bit on the body, that will be fine. So let's pop a little bit of cove blue in there as well. And a little bit of royal treatment. So to do these colors, I'm just tapping it onto the wings, just using the edge of the pad. We'll then grab our purple brush and just dab over it just to blend those colors not blend them all the way in together, but just to soften the edges of them. We give it a little spritz, just a small one for this. And I will stamp it off on my scrap paper first before I stamp it onto the card. So one stamp onto a bit of scrap and then onto the card. Do I need a bit more of a spritz? No, it's still wet. Excellent. So we've just got a little bit of motley colour there underneath the wings. And I'll give that a clean because we're going to come back and use that stamp again in a moment. Don't know where to put it on my desk. Right, now our next stage, and I am going to put some scrap paper underneath my, on top of my work surface there for this, because I'm going to be using the Distress Spray Stain and going off the edge of the card. And for this, I'm going to use our text stamp, the one that looks like, uh, that's dictionary type text. I'm going to use that one, which will come up great with this stain. So the idea of this, it's not a paint, it's a stain. And you just dab it on, and you can also wipe it with the dauber so you get an uneven application of it. And you'll find that as well as getting, it doesn't give a clearly stamped image like an ink would, you get more of a smudgy effect. You still get the text, but it's more smudgy. And it also being a distress product, it'll pick up a little bit of the pinks and blues underneath. So it stays white, but with some other colors coming through. It's just a fabulous product. Now we can actually use the same stamp without re-inking it and add a little bit more there. And then I might just ink up a few bits of it and add a little bit at the bottom. How cool is that? Now to do the other side, I don't really want a hard edge of text. So if I give the stamp a bit of a clean, so just wiping it on my sponge and then on my mat that I have on my lap that you can't see, now, instead of, of applying the stain all the way there, I'm going to start at this edge, put some on and just wipe back a bit towards there, but not completely to that edge. And you'll see what I mean when I pop this onto the card, that we're not getting a solid edge. Put a bit more down the bottom there. Okay. Now I'm going to add some more background stamping. So that's all we need of that one. And I'm going to bring in one to use now that we've already been, I've already been, it's got dried because this will take a few minutes to dry. Now on this one, I didn't do a second generation stamping for the wings. So the wings are a bit stronger. And this is the one where I did all that background shading, then spritzed it with the metallic. So we've got a lot more mottliness in the background. This one's a lot smoother finish. Same products, slightly different technique, will give you a different look. Okay, so now let's do some, oh, I'll leave that there because again, I'm going to be stamping off the edge. So we'll bring in some of our word stamps and I've got, I've picked the dragonfly and the Anisipotera, can't quite pronounce it. These are Latin words for different types of dragonflies. Very fancy. I just thought that they, they just really look good. <laughs> I'm not going to try and pronounce them, but they look great. So with our stamp, we can do a first generation stamping. We can also ink up, stamp off once on our scrap, and then come in and do some second generation images. Or third. 
I won't actually go forth. I might run out of oomph completely. Off on the scrap. Let's put a second generation one in up there. And maybe one more down the bottom. But going, let your images go off the paper. Now let's get royal treatment and the other word that I'm using that I can't pronounce. And this one I'll do it all as second generation. So stamping on the scrap. I did get on my fingers. I've just wiped my hand a bit there before I ink again. Always make remember with your Catherine Puller inks, with a smaller stamp, I am taking the stamp to the ink pad, but I'm just tapping. Never push into these ink pads. They're so squishy, you'll just end up with way too much ink everywhere. You'll end up with it all over your fingers. And I think we'll just sneak one more in there, and that's probably enough. But I thought you liked ink on your fingers. I do. I do, but not so much that I'm going to smear it all over my card. There is a limit to how messy you can get when you're stamping. Right, so that's all looking fabulous now. So let's just go back. We'll take that out of our way. We're going to get now the outline image. And I'm going to use this in my stamp press so that I can line up exactly where I want it to be. Especially as the card is a little bit buckled. Now that card, um, once I've finished doing everything, I could just put it under a heavy book for a little bit. Um, if I hadn't, I'm going to be embossing on it, but if I hadn't embossed, I could actually um, run that through a laminator or iron it to flatten it down, put it under some heavy books, or what I often end up doing is just putting loads of double-sided tape on the back before I stick it down to another card. So let's have a look at where our anatomical dragonfly. Now it's not an exact match to the wing shape. It's made to look for this to look a little bit smudgy and sketchy. So you don't have to worry about lining up exactly with it. And where have I put my little magnets? There's one. I was thinking, oh, I'm just doing backgrounds. I don't need the magnets. <laughs> Let's pick that up, ink it up with the VersaFine Clear Black, which will give us a great black image over all of our background colour. Just making sure that I've got tapped over all those fine edges of the wings. I don't want to miss any bits. And Pop it in place and press down. Now on the press you can just rub over it or you can press over it, whatever you find easier to do. Let it lift up and then open. And there's our wonderful dragonfly image. Let's pop our press to one side. And I do need that the VersaFine Clear Black does take a few minutes to dry. And because I want to emboss over the top of it, I'm just going to make sure that I've got that nice and dry. Probably actually doesn't really matter because I'm going to emboss over the top of it. So the embossing powder can stick wherever it wants to to the dragonfly. Let's make sure it's nice and flat. And I'm also just feeling that those other inks are feeling dry, which they are. So now to give these rings a real shine and really bring them out. This is where I'm going to use my clear embossing powder, Versamark, and go back to the solid image of the dragonfly. So ink that up really well with our Versamark pad. Make sure I've got a little bit of catching paper ready. Stamp it onto there. I'm just going to turn that sideways so I can see that I'm lining it up. Press down, pop our em clear embossing powder on, and this will just give these wings a real shine and bring out all that lovely metallic power, the metallic spray that we did underneath, bring out all that opalescence there. So that has covered those wings fabulously. Pop all our excess back in the jar and put it to one side while we do some heating. 
And Matthew will probably get a lovely close up for us because the heating on clear powder looks fabulous as it starts to change. So it's sealing it in and just giving it that beautiful shine. Now that's where our card could finish at that point and would be fine. We could just layer that onto a black card and it would look fabulous. Or, or <laughs> what I did with this sample, and I'm not going to do this now, but what I did with this sample is I, when I was creating the background, created an extra piece, which I then stamped the dragonfly onto, did the embossing of the clear over the wings and then fussy cut that out so that I could lift the wings up and stick it over the top of the first one. So it meant I didn't do the embossing on the bottom layer on this one. I just stamped it. Let's lift it up. You can see it's just stamped there. And then we've just popped that one over the top to give us the 3D to the wings. So if you want to go to the extra trouble, you can do that. I've also created a little bit more of a board around on this one, which I will do with this card. So I'll just bring a little bit of scrap paper in and a second bit of scrap to give me an edge. Line the edge up so that I've got an equal border across there and grab the Royal Treatment ink. So I'll just move that. So I've just got to make sure again that I've got that lined up so that my border is the same all the way along. Very carefully flip the ink pad over in your hand and either running it along or patting it, just cover that edge with ink. You may find a mixture of patting and rubbing will get to it all. Let's go down the side. Again, let's line it up and make sure that we've got about the same amount of card showing all the way along. In fact, I think I need that a little bit more that way. Is there any danger that the last lot of ink you did is still wet? Yes, the inking along the bottom edge. No. Yep. So some of it could actually be soaking up into that paper. But probably not enough to actually make a difference to what we're doing. You could, of course, be doing this with your brush. We could just brush it along. Or you could do it a mixture of both, depending on what gives you the best result. But when you're doing it directly from the ink pad, you'll get intensity of ink quicker than what you will with the brush. So I'm just sort of looking at where the edge of the pad is. So I'm just using the edge of the pad on the edge of the card and our last border. So the trick, so what this is doing is it will create the look that we've actually matted it onto an extra layer of card. So we're just faking it really. <laughs> and I just stuck my finger in the ink pad, but at this stage that doesn't matter. Let's tap along. Get all these messy bits of paper out of here and then you'll be able to see what we've done. So we've just created this extra border that just looks like we've added a purple mat in there as well as our black mat. So let's just bring that forward onto the black there and you'll be able to get a bit more of a look. So as I said, I can just use tape to flatten that down or I'd probably actually sit a book over it on it overnight just to flatten it right out before I actually layered everything up. Okay, so I hope you like that one. So just using, so by having a solid stamp in your set, it just means you can do so many different effects with it. The actual image that I've used on the label, I inked that with three different colors of the Versamagic chalk inks to get that multi sort of colored effect. So you can do, you can ink in different colors, either pigment inks, which will start to go waterproof, or by inking with the different colours with the Catherine Pooler inks, you can then spritz them with water and get more watercolour effects. 
We can use it for applying a clear layer of embossing powder. There's all sorts of different things you can do by having the combination of the solid stamp and the outline stamp together. Hope you enjoyed that one. Hope you enjoy playing with these words that I can't pronounce. And we'll see you again next time for some more Crafting with Kathy.